Thank you, Henrik. Major intersecting technological changes are redefining the automotive industry at a pace and scale without equivalent in other industrial sectors. We're seeing multiple simultaneous transformations in the digitalization of the car and its connected services, as well as in electrification. The changes we see coming in autonomy, electrification and connectivity has one common enabler, and that is software. Software is continuously increasing in volume, complexity and value. Eventually, it will impact, transform, or even disrupt every part of the automotive industry. To be successful, we need to embrace this change and leverage from it. Utilizing all the advantages the software can provide. We believe in the software-defined car, where the majority of features are moving to become software-based. And instead of being recognized for what suspension or engine type it has, a car will be defined by its software-driven functions and features. It will also be defined by the ability to flexibly add software-based content during its life cycle, making it better and more customizable according to what customers want. With this reality in mind, we are optimizing our customer experience. And one key ability would be the frequent and continuous over their software deployment to our customer cars throughout their life cycle. Car will no longer be at the best when they leave the factory but rather constantly improved through new software and feature updates. We have, already, we have already started this journey in today's cars, providing full software updates. And this is something we will expand even further going forward. The continuous over there update stream will provide our customers with unprecedented value add. And we'll also see the opportunity to move towards subscription-based services which will provide us the ability to, over time, monetize on this value stream. And as we're moving towards a car where software is the important asset, we're expanding our in-house development of software. By taking charge of our own software development, we can boost development speeds and improve your Volvo faster. Our next generation of pure electric models will run our own operating system called Volvo Cars OS. This incorporates our various operating systems across the car, cloud, and creating one coherent software OS environment. But more on that later. Currently, our electrical architecture consists of a distributed compute system with more than 100 electrical control units, or ECUs. These are sourced as combined packages of hardware and software. Basically, they're electrical boxes with compiled code from different suppliers that we integrate into our car architecture. They control the behavior in devices such as, uh, for example, a rear parking camera. And this structure requires several handovers in the development cycle with significant efforts on our part in terms of requirement specification, transfer of knowledge to and from suppliers, and massive integration work. And as software becomes more complex, these integration efforts grow exponentially and increase lead time in our development. When key software is owned by suppliers, the ability to faster evolve, adjust, and deploy updates to meet customer demands are limited. This also means, ultimately, the experience we want to give customers, customers largely come from suppliers and not from us. To support our vision of a software-defined car, we are transforming our car's electrical architecture with our new core system, which is set to be revealed in 2022. We're creating a computer on wheels, capable of running the carefully crafted Volvo experience we want to offer customers. And instead of relying on hundreds of ECUs all over the car, 
We are moving towards a centralized computing system, our core system. And over here we have uh, one example, our core computer. So this computer has massive CPU, GPU, memory. We will deploy two of these into every car. We'll also connect our Android infotainment system into this network that they communicate over, a high-speed Ethernet network. And they will communicate with the mechatronic rim through gateways. So <clears throat> this is our core computer, as you see the uh, first example of here. Uh, the computer manages tasks like general computing, vision processing, and machine learning. It runs all software controlling the behavior of the vehicle, and it's supported, supported by significant in-house development. You can call this core system the brain of the car. And then the connected devices, the muscles that generate the behavior customers are experiencing. And this shift to centralized computing allows us to gradually separate hardware from software. By preparing hardware from, by separating hardware from software, we won't have to solely rely on supplier provided ECUs to produce the behavior we want. We will have a greater control of the customer experience, which is something we want to develop on our own. And when doing that, we can bring out the full potential of the software defined car while rapidly increasing the flexibility and speed in our development cycles. And with our core system and in-house software tech stack, we create full control of the integration flow from code to complete car. One example of the speed and flexibility that gives us can be seen in bugger solving. With supplier code, it can take us one, but often several weeks from discovering bug to resolving it. With our in-house team, that process takes a workday. For function development, we can see similar significant speed improvements when we move from supplier code to in-house developed. We have examples of moving from two years to three months for similar work packages. That is an eight times speed improvement. Our software stack is derived by principles of continuous development and continuous release. It's built for growth, and it enables our features to keep expanding. One example is our pilot assist function, which allows for driver support from standstill up to highway speeds. When run on, running on this the core system, we can start to evolve it from start to evolve it into autonomous capabilities. The core system computing. It's a computing powerhouse developed with our guiding star of safety and security first. We believe in partnering with technology leaders when it makes sense, which is why we're collaborating with NVIDIA. Our partnership gives us access to the fastest and best computing currently available. We will use the NVIDIA Drive Orient system on a chip. I will be the first to market with this technology. In our first generation of the system, we will use two compute boxes, where both have the capability to execute low and high ACL code. We'll distribute the workload between the boxes through our distributed service framework. We're centralizing compute-heavy functions like pilot assist, autonomous drive, motion control, and we're moving logic from around 10 larger ECUs into the core system, including logic from such as cameras and LiDARs. This will enable us to continuously collect data, train algorithms, improve and add new functions. This is something we'll do for new as well as for customer cars. In our second iteration of the core system, we continue to involve our in-house software stack. We increase centralization and optimize the mechanical integration. The two core compute boxes will be merged into one, still using NVIDIA SOCs. We'll introduce some controllers, will allow us to centralize more ECUs, reducing the number of ECUs by around 50. With fewer ECUs, we also reduce weight 
and improve the car energy efficiency, and in turn reducing the running costs for our customers. We can also reduce weight significantly by developing the mechanical platform and the electrical architecture hand in hand. For example, by optimizing the mechanical platform and placement of sensors and actuators with the cable harnesses in mind, we are reducing the cable length by more than 700 meters per car. All right, let's move back to the Volvo car OS. I said in the beginning that it's our own OS, but it's not exactly true. We use a number of underlying operating systems, including Android, QNX, Autosar, and Linux, which we bind together into one coherent software platform. Work on this in-house software started in with the Android development in 2017, and the platform is now extended to incorporate the core system as well as vehicle applications and the cloud. The stack is covering all key onboard systems, such as uh, Android infotainment, connectivity, vehicle control, and ADA DAS. The extension into cloud covers applications such as uh, connected safety and car remote functions. Through a variety of APIs, the Volvo Car OS gives developers access to in-car features such as vehicle control, vehicle sensor data, user interfaces and cloud-based features, so for example, fleet data. This allows developers to create new services and applications for Volvo cars. The Volvo Cars OS will make it easier for both internal and third-party developers to create new features and functions for cars. And we're open to outside development. In our open innovation portal, we have more than 400 registered developers, and more keep coming in. The portal has attracted several third-party companies that are now developing apps using the Android SDK, Emulator, and open APIs that we provide. And vice versa, the third-party collaboration is also helping us drive the evolution of our open innovation portal. The portal is gradually extended with more APIs and larger coverage of the vehicle platform enabling more innovation and, down the line, a broader offer of high-quality services and in-car apps for our customers. By being open for third-party development, we're also offering developers to create their business through our platform. In-house software development is one of our cornerstones. Today, we have over 200 software development teams. And that number is growing, and will continue to grow for some time. That's good, because we're currently riding on a wave of major technological changes that are dramatically changing the way that we work. And in the middle of that, software is a driving factor. We're adapting by evolving from being predominantly a product company focusing on cars into becoming more of a service-based tech company. And we believe that strong software professionals are key for future success. And we're constantly looking for software talent across the globe. And we're not only developing in-house software for our cars. It also extends into all our systems, such as cloud, online business, and IT support systems. And all these areas grow every day with more in-house software professionals. These people are essential for providing speed in continuous development, integration and deployment, as well as outstanding innovation. Right now, around 30% of our core software is developed internally. And with the introduction of our new core system, we will double that to 60% and then continue to steadily grow the amount of in-house software. Our in-house development Make sure that we build and evolve from using super strong technology stacks. We build using well-established open source, such as Android and Linux. We employ open APIs that enable third-party innovation. Our in-house development capability also gives us, us the ability to collaboratively effectively with key technology partners, such as NVIDIA and Google. These partnerships are essential to us, since it's much more effective than trying to do everything on our own. And to wrap it up, I think there are three key takeaways from this session. 
first is that core system is a computing powerhouse. The foundation for high development speed and continuous deployment to our cars. And second is our in-house software development teams are the key asset to build and evolve the Volvo Car OS, which enables high innovation speed for Volvo, as well as for our partners. And finally, as software is a key cornerstone for us, we're always looking for software talent. Thank you. <laughs>